quick recap. We introduced constant versus balance functions. Constant functions have the same output for every input. So for Boolean functions, this can only be functions which produce zero for every input or one for every input. Balance functions are ones which have the same number of zeros as ones at the output. So there were two to the n possible inputs for an n bit uh, function, in which case half of them would be zero. Where those zeros line up, uh, that is completely random if we don't know what the function is, but we know that half of them are zero, half of them are one. If we get unlucky as we're querying them classically, we might have to query half plus one extra query to find out for sure whether or not the function is constant or balanced. Classically, we have to just check each input in, uh, well, in serial, check each input one at a time, or maybe we can check them in parallel, but then we'd be counting how many computers we need to, in parallel, check each input. Quantum mechanically, we introduced this quantum oracle, which implemented a kind of re a reversible version of each function and now we're going to find out how many quantum queries we need when we looked at the quantum oracle we were looking at things that map basis vectors to basis vectors so we didn't have any superposition so that's where the question comes from where is all the superposition the first thing to note is that for that uh, one bit function example, maybe we can introduce the state which is uh, the most superposed. So the plus plus state, which is a superposition of all the inputs, so it's like that's like the most parallel, quantum parallel thing we can think of. We can be checking the the function on all inputs with a single state. However, we can see that since each of those functions mapped a basis state to another basis state, and all of the basis states had to be covered, in fact, under the application of u of f, no matter which circuit we had, we end up with the same state. So that's not helpful. That's not going to tell us anything about u of f. But if we look at this superposition, we can see kind of what we need to do. We want superposition, but we want to be able to distinguish two different types of applications of u sub f. That means that for some of these coefficients, we want them to be different. and well, we can imagine we want them to be as different as possible. And what's the most different from plus one, minus one. So instead of the plus state, perhaps we need the minus state. And where should we put this minus state? Well, maybe we should put it in that last register of the quantum oracle circuit, because that seems like a special register. We, we had n qubits, and then we had this one special register which records the application of the function. So let's ask what happens when we just leave that input register alone, no superposition there, but we put a minus state instead of a plus state in the second register. Well, this is of course x uh, zero minus x1 and remember just remember there's a 1 over root 2 we're gonna leave it off because that's annoying to have to put that there and we can see that uh, after we apply u sub f okay so now we're going to apply u sub f uh, actually let's do that explicitly let's remind ourselves um, u sub f acting on x, y was equal to x, y, 
plus f of x. Okay, so now we have two different values of y. So we can um, look at what u sub f acting on x minus is. And we do that to each of the terms in the superposition. So we have x, 0 plus f of x minus x, 1 plus f of x. f of x can only be one of two values. So we can just look at this and ask, what happens if f of x is 0? If f of x is 0, then I have x, 0, minus x, 1. And I end up with the th same thing that I started with. So uh, let, let's, let's do one more thing, just to make this easier. We have x, then we have f of x minus 1 plus f of x. All right, now, f of x is zero, means we have zero minus one, which is clearly the minus state. If f of x is one, we have one minus zero, which is minus one times the minus state. So these are the only two possibilities. If we put in the minus state, we either get the minus state back, if f of x is zero, or we get minus the minus state if f of x is 1. Another way to write this is simply x and minus 1 to the power of f of x times that minus state. All right, so let's double check. If f of x is 0, then the minus 1 becomes 1, and we end up where we started. If f of x is 1, then we pick up this minus sign. And just for clarity, let's bring the constant in front of everything. Okay, so that's a that's a global phase. Let's put back in that superposition over all the input states. Remember, we're going to try to be a bit aggressive and get this done with one query. So we need all of the input states. So we'll put plus, uh, we'll look at what the application of the oracle is to plus minus, right? So this is the, in the case of the one bit, right? It's u acting on zero plus one, oh, zero plus one times this minus state and that's the same as u zero minus one plus u of f one minus one so we're being very explicit here and now we can just basically apply this formula so we have this we have uh, something that's written as u acting on x minus where x is zero and x is 1, so we can just apply our formula from up here. So we have minus 1 to the power of f of 0, because x is 0, 0 minus, and minus 1 to the power of f of 1, 1 minus, and we can see that on the right hand side of this implicit tensor product is the minus state so we can factor that out and we have minus one to the power of f of zero zero plus minus one to the power of f of one one and the minus state comes along for the ride all right, so uh, we don't have our our function here, but we can just quickly remind ourselves what those potential values were. So the input is either zero or one. 
the output is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Those are the four possibilities. So a constant function, which is here, constant, is the all zero or all one function. And the balance function is here, balance. And for the one bit example, it's quite nice. So either the value of f of 0 and f of 1 is the same, or it's different. And that tells us whether or not it's constant or balanced. So we have a case 1, f of 0 is the same as f of 1. And that's, remember, that's a constant function. All right, that's case one. And oh, let's keep the colors the same. Let's just keep the colors the same. Let's say they're not equal. And then we'll switch to green. Balanced. F of zero is not equal to F of one. That means we're in this, um, in one of these red columns over here, zero one or one zero. If f of 0 is not equal to f of 1, then one of these uh, coefficients is a negative 1 and the other is plus 1. And we're going to end up with uh, plus or minus 1 and a minus minus. Okay, so if we have f of 0 is equal to 0 and then f of 1 is equal to 1, we get end up with the minus state. If f of 0 is equal to 1 and f of 1 is equal to 0, then we end up with minus the minus state. Okay, So we have a global phase out front, but we end up with minus minus. Case 2 is when f of 0 is equal to f of 1, and that's the constant function, right? So either it's 0, 0 or 1, 1. In either case, those two things are the same. If f of 0 is equal to 0 and f of 1 is equal to 0, then we have 0 plus 1. So we have plus minus. If f of 0 and f of 1 are both 1, then we have minus 0, minus 1, and that's minus the plus state. So again, we end up with plus, minus, but then there's this global phase out front. The global, at this point, we're kind of done with the circuit. So the global phase doesn't matter anymore. And we can see that in case one, for balance functions, we have minus, minus. And in case two, for constant functions, we have plus, minus. And those two states are perfectly distinguishable. We can get back to the original uh, kind of computational basis if we apply Hadamard's, right? So we, we're looking at applying u of f to plus and minus. That involves applying some Hadamard gates. So we can get back to our 0, 1 basis by again applying more Hadamard gates. And we end up with a circuit that starts in 0, as most circuits do. We want a one. Uh, we, we want a minus state in the second register. So first, we're going to apply an x and then a Hadamard because Hadamard takes one to minus. And at the top, we're going to just apply Hadamard because we want a plus state. Then we apply the oracle, and after the oracle, we end up with one of these two states: case one or case two. If the oracle implemented a balance function, we'll have a minus minus state. If the oracle implemented a constant function, we'll have a plus minus state. And we can get back to our zero one basis if we perform another Hadamard in measure. And um, we called the second one a scratch qubit because, well, you know, we we don't. We, I mean, it's useful for the computation, but we don't need it in the end. We end up with two possible outcomes. The plus state under the Hadamard goes to zero, so that means if we see a zero when we measure, we have a constant function. If we see a one when we measure, we have a balanced function. 
and this happens deterministically in one run of the algorithm. So for a one-bit algorithm, the classical query complexity is two. We need to check both inputs to determine whether or not we have F0 or three versus F1 or two. And quantum mechanically, we only need one run of the algorithm. You can actually scale this up to n, bit, n bits or n qubits, and the number of quantum queries you need remains one, and the number of classical queries, remember from the second video in this week, was two to the minus two to the n minus one plus one, so exponential number of queries versus a single query in the quantum case. You can see in the lecture notes what the deutsch josa circuit looks like for n qubits, but this one here, I think, illustrates the basic point. The homework is to actually analyze the n qubit uh, al deutsch josa algorithm, and that will require using some, some summation notation, but uh, you have all of the tools you need by looking at the one bit example. So that's the first quantum speed up that you've encountered for a computational problem.